All right, welcome back. This is going to be part 67 of my presentation on dinosaurs and man. In this video here, we're going to kind of round up the whole topic of the Amazon area and uh, with a unique uh, pictograph. pictograph. Now, a pictograph is like a painting. You're painting on a wall. That's what you would consider a pictograph. Um, a petroglyph is more of a scarring or scratching into the rock or the stone. And so this right here, if you'll notice in the past, um, this is from the Havasupai Canyon um, of what could be a bipedal dinosaur um, standing on two legs. And so, uh, you know, like your T-Rex would be a bipedal dinosaur. And so, you know, could this be a dinosaur? You know, now I've mentioned in the, in the video that I did on this one that um, there have been some people that stated that the Indians would sometimes carve their or make their eagles to look somewhat similar to this right here. And so, but does that look like an eagle or does that look like a dinosaur? <laughs> so, but this is a petroglyph. This is a petroglyph because it's scarred in or it's scratched into the, the rock or the stone. And so, but what we're going to look at is a pictograph. It's a pictograph, very unique pictograph. And so if you'll notice on the screen here, this is that area. Look at the top of that picture right there where that white arrow is. That's the area that we're going to be looking at. It's an Amazon forest, a valley along the Rio uh, Maranon uh, in Peru. That's the area we're going to be looking at. And so this is that uh, pictograph in question. Take a good look at that, guys. You got a whole bunch of what looks to be um, hunters with sticks or spears around an animal. Very unique animal. It's got a little head, long neck, big body. It looks like the front legs are taller than the back legs. Um, and then it's got a long tail. And so check it out. What type of animal do you think that could be? Now, this is a... Uh, what they did is they did a um, a painting of what that is indicating. So that the the picture on the right is more of a cleared up picture, and um, and this right here came from Untold Secrets of Planet Earth um, Discovery Series, which is the Amazon expedition by Vance Nelson. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about him and his ministry in just a minute. But um, this is a fascinating book, guys. If you guys get a chance to to uh, get a hold of that, but take a look at that. What do you think it could be? If it's not a dinosaur, what is it? I mean, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys around this creature. And so it's got to be something formidable to have so many guys around it. And so here's, this is an apatosaur on the top and a brachiosaur on the bottom. I'm thinking more on the lines of possibly a brachiosaur. It's got a lot of the, the physical attributes of the brachiosaur, um, especially in the, uh, the, the front of the, the animal there. Um, it's, to, me, to me, it looks more like um, they're showing something um, with the taller front legs. I could be wrong, and so maybe it's just the artist didn't quite get the uh, dimensions right on it. <laughs> and so, uh, but either one of those, an apatosaur or a brachiosaur. And so um, you're talking about a big body, um, four legs, long neck, and a small head, and a long tail. And so um, I wouldn't argue with it being either one of these animals. And so to me, it fits a, um, a dinosaur, a dinosaur like what you see here, either one of those. And so, but... Professor Ulysses, um, I'm, I'm going to try his name, Gaminol um, Guevara, he's an evolutionist, guys. Now, listen, I want you guys to take note of this. He is an evolutionist, and I want you to see how, just how open-minded this, open that this guy has, or open-minded that he is. Along with about 10 other secular archaeologists from Colombia, two universities, Poland and Peru, affirm that the pictograph is true and real. It's true and real. So what you see there, going back to that picture, what you see there in this picture, they said, from secular authorities, they said, this picture is real. 
It's real. It's a real deal. What is it portraying, though? It says the bright red-colored pigments, as seen on the pictographs, are typical of the Amazon region of Peru and Colombia. It is possible that the crushed seeds from the anato tree, a.k.a. the lipstick tree, um, I'm going to try that's Echiote, Echiote, um, as known in Peru, um, were used to create the pigment. To test the pigment on the pictograph, a process called plasma oxidation in conjunction with AMS carbon-14 analysis, the process dates pigments, not the minerals in the rock. The date came back to 3,290 plus or minus 110 radiocarbon years, showing in the pictograph is ancient and authentic. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is amazing because if you think about the flood happening about 44, 4,500 years ago, that would have, that would match up really nice to the time site, the, the biblical time scale or timeline um, that, you know, us creationists believe. And so no problem with it, guys. There's the, This has no contradiction with that. And so that is absolutely, truly amazing to behold. Now, if you'll remember earlier in an earlier uh, video, we talked about some other paintings or pictographs that were found in the area. And if you'll, I'm just highlighting this article. It's tens of thousands of paintings were found or were discovered on a smooth cliff faces which spans eight miles in the Amazon forest. Guys, listen at eight miles in the Amazon forest. Um, the age, secular timelines say the paintings were about 12,000 years old. So again, they're saying that those paintings are legit also. They, the, the pictures showed handprints, people dancing, geometric shapes, trees, plants, wide variety of animals, giant sloths, horses, mastodons, which is a type of, um, um, uh, a variety of, um, of, of elephant. Fish, turtles, lizards, monkeys, and birds. Wooden towers are also portrayed, and um, and so that's what was on here. But I want you guys to take a look at that pigment. That pigment is the same as what is being shown on this on this animal that these warriors are or these hunters are surrounding. It's the same color. There's no doubt in my mind that it's, it has to be the exact same pigment that is used on those other walls. And so again. We're showing more confirmation that this picture is legit. The only thing is, what is it showing? What animal can you think of that looks like that? The only thing that could even possibly come close to that is a dinosaur. You can't say a giraffe because a giraffe's tail is not that long. It's not that long. It's got to be something more um, profound than that. And so, again, it has to be something formidable because you got so many people surrounding this thing. And so, now, um, this professor said, uh, after being asked what he believed the animal was, he said, it is a prehistoric animal. After asking what specific animal he thought it was, he responded that he believed it was a dinosaur. So there you go. This is an evolutionist, guys. This is a guy that believed that these animals died off about 65 million years ago. Now, this is what he says. He believed that the dinosaurs further north, such as Mexico, had gone extinct 65 million years ago, and that would fall along the evolutionary timeline. But the dinosaurs in the valley along the Rio Maranon um, escaped that mass extinction. He believed that they be that they lived with man until they were hunted to extinction. And this is also known as the survival theory. That's a survival theory where they believe that they were just hunted to extinction. And so, now, let me point this out, guys, um, that this guy believes in evolution, but he believes also that it is very well possible that dinosaurs lived alongside a man until they were hunted to extinction. Now, did the belief that dinosaurs and man change this guy's view on evolution as a whole? I don't believe it did, because he's still an evolutionist, <laughs> So that's my whole point with people saying, well, do you believe that if they found a dinosaur, do you believe that would cause a mass, a big revival in the world? No, I don't. You may gain a few, 
But I don't believe as a whole, guys, you're going to really change anybody's beliefs. Remember what Jesus said um, when uh, what, what the when he was uh, relaying that story about Lazarus and the rich man. Remember when um, the rich man was asking Abraham to send Lazarus back from the dead. Um, uh, Abraham said that they have Moses and the prophets. They have Moses and prophets, which is the Bible, which is the Bible. If they wouldn't believe the Bible, they wouldn't believe, um, if they were, oh, excuse me, they wouldn't be persuaded. Let me just say that. That's what the Bible says. They wouldn't even be persuaded, guys, though one person rose from the dead. So get that. Get that. They're not good. They wouldn't even be persuaded. If they don't believe the scriptures, if they don't have faith in the Bible, God's written word, and they won't believe it, they wouldn't even be persuaded, though you would have produced a miracle. And so that's what I think is so dangerous in some of these ministries that try to center on signs and wonders because people need to be pointed to the Bible. They need to be pointed to the scriptures. They don't need to be pointed to a miracle, a sign or a wonder. And so this guy here is an evolutionist, but he still believes, or he's enough open-minded enough, open-minded enough to believe that dinosaurs and man did live at the same time. And so I need to make that. That's the reason why my ministry is focused on uh, the believers. The believers. I want to educate the believers about um, about the things that may be confusing them out here. And so if I gain an, a non-believer. Amen. Praise God. But people that don't believe the Bible or won't believe the Bible or want to debate the Bible are not going to even be persuaded if though you was to produce even a dinosaur. I don't believe I don't believe that they're going to make them actually uh, uh, change their minds. He says people do not want to accept another reality. They have come from Spain, England, Switzerland. They have been um, uncomfortable because it does not fit within their system. This is the evolutionary timeline. This is an evolutionist talking, you guys. They can't see an incredible animal together with man, even more so because it looks like a dinosaur. Now, this came from this professor who's an evolutionist. Now, I believe this guy has hope. <laughs> I will say that. This guy has hope to, to believe in the gospel. Now, I tell you right, you're going to have more hope with him than one of these other folks that Still, that don't that won't even squeeze a good thought in there that it possibly could be true, and so. But at any rate, um, and the, and again, it's in the same general area. We're looking at the equator, the equatorial area of the planet, the warmer areas, just like with Africa and stuff. And so, now um, as far as Vance Nelson, you guys need to check this guy out. Um, he's a, he's just a no nonsense guy. He likes to have his hands on stuff. I really trust this guy's, um, opinions on stuff and the evidence that he, uh, produces. Um, go to www.creationtruthministries.org. That's www.creationtruthministries.org and check him out. You'll see all types of, um, artifacts that he is producing. Um, he's, he's produced some new ones. He's selling some stuff. Um, also, that is legit. That is not a reproduction. It's legit evidence that you could show when you're producing, you know, presenting in front of a class and stuff. I wish I had some more money because he said he's got some pretty good stuff I like to get my hands on, maybe one of these days. Um, but also, check his books out. Um, for some of you that may have a bookstore in your church or something like that, get his books. Um, I had gotten an email just recently at the time of this recording where he's um, offering a discount on mass orders. And so check him out, guys. It may be worth your time. Um, these are the books that he's got. I have every one of them. And I, I tell you what, um, I am not sorry that I bought his books. And so anything that this guy puts out is something that I definitely um, want to get my hands on and add to my library because it's the type of researcher that he is. And so um, I've had emails, correspondence with him. I've spoken on the phone with him. And um, and there's things that I don't show um, and things I do show based upon some of the information that I've been able to glean from him. Um, other books that you can get is Exploration Fawcett and The Rivers Ran East by Leonard Clark. Probably going to have to check out some antique bookstores for these right here. Um, but these are fascinating books, guys, that you guys can learn other information about some of the things that's been seen out here and um, out in that areas. 
And of course, um, Dave Wutzel, um, go to www.genesispark.com. You're going to learn a bunch of stuff from this gentleman. Um, I believe he's actually made um, uh, exploration um, or research, and he actually went out to Africa into that Congo area himself. And so, but this is a good book. I do have it, Chronicles of Dinosauria. Um, check it out. It is definitely a good book to get. And so when we get back, when we come back together, we are going to check out Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea. And uh, so other than that, we're going to stop right there. I hope you guys have been learning some tremendous amount of things. Um, and so, uh, like I said, we come back, we're going to check out this other area, Papua New Guinea. And we are going to continue right along. And so, but you guys take care. I love you. And I hope the Lord blesses you real good.